Njombe, in the highlands of southwest Tanzania, is one of East Africa's timber centers. Here and across the region, people in towns depend on charcoal for cooking. But charcoal is expensive, and production causes pollution and leads to deforestation. To answer these problems, a unique technology has been developed locally. No engineering degree required, just homegrown initiative and a passion for design. The Kisingani Smith Group is a collective of blacksmiths dedicated to giving unemployed youths a future. Founder member is Ruben Ntitu. We aim to give them an alternative to falling into street crime and a way of becoming self-reliant. Blacksmithing is quite easy to learn and the basic toolkit is cheap, so it's easy for them to get set up back in their villages. Blacksmithing depends heavily on charcoal. In an attempt to get an independent fuel supply, they started a sustainable forestry project which got them wondering how to conserve the timber. Once local wood has been sawn into planks, it's sent across the country and East Africa. The byproduct has created a river of sawdust. Sometimes it's burnt as waste, but more often it's left to rot. I started to think, after I'd seen people burning this waste, that I should make a stove that people could use to see whether there was any way to put it to good use. Ruben and his team got thinking. Loose sawdust burns unreliably, so they needed a way to turn it into an efficient fuel. The design they came up with relies on two essential accessories. You fill it up, but first you put this stick in the middle, and then you fill up the sawdust around it, then compress it. Without too much effort, the filling tool produces something like a sawdust briquette that burns slowly and evenly. Then you take it out and carefully remove the stick, leaving the hole that will let the air into the middle. The air comes through a side inlet and is drawn up through the centre of the sawdust. Once it's lit, it burns for up to six hours. The top of the stove is designed to spread the heat evenly so it doesn't burn the pan and after lighting it's almost smoke-free. This pan of water took about 20 minutes to boil. Stoves are made using a simple template. Most of the work is done by hand. The parts are cut from a sheet of mild steel and using a hammer skillfully, parts are shaped, joints created and rivets fabricated. As there is a little drilling and welding, mains power is needed. Very simple to make it. It's not difficult and it is simple to use it. Stove sales have taken off in Njombe as people have seen the advantages of using sawdust. With no charcoal fuel bill, the purchase price is usually recovered in about four months. Since I bought the stove, I don't have any expenses. That's why I like this, because when I was using the charcoal stove, the costs were high. And now that I use this stove, it helps me in many ways. I start in the morning about 6 o'clock when I wake up. I heat water for us to wash and then I cook breakfast. And at 1 o'clock for lunchtime I cook my beans. And the stove is still on. I cook everything, rice, beans, donuts, using just one stove. If you put a bit of firewood in the vent, it gets hotter and cooks things quicker. When I use charcoal, it gives me a headache if I stay a long time in the kitchen. With this one, I don't get headaches anymore because it doesn't produce any smoke. But how do you cut down on charcoal if you don't live near a sawmill? The good news is they've been experimenting with other everyday waste materials for fuel. But in other places where wood isn't being sawn, the good thing about it is that you can use rice husks. It's a great stove because you can use it in any areas where you have products like these. 
They've sold over 3,500 stoves, some for sawdust and some for burning wood more efficiently, many of them to wholesale traders elsewhere in Tanzania. But that's with very little marketing. The group now wants to publicize their technology and scale up manufacture. We also want to be able to sell them at a good price so people on low incomes can be able to afford them. The Kisangani Smith Group would like to produce the stoves in large quantities so that people can use them in their villages without destroying the environment.